Yes, before you enter this area, before you enter the front counter, you wash your hands. All right, enjoy tonight. Seriously, enjoy tonight because tomorrow is the real thing. Stage one is nearly complete, which is the training before the shop opens. So this is the process, okay? In, shake it, 10 seconds. In here, cover it up, shake, shake. Same standards are expected from here from Cape Town to London, in Russia, anywhere we are. The standards will be the same. Thank you. Because that is the brand standards. I think the, the stricter the process is, the stricter the, your, your um, other franchisees are. So if the bar is set high, then all over the world, it's the same, it's the same standard which is of course very, very important in a global brand. During the training, the product that the staff have been producing, not me, but the staff have been producing is far superior than what we've eaten out there. Now, if the managers and the, and the franchisees police the business, which I've asked them to do and show them how to do it, then they cannot go wrong. But the first few weeks is very crucial because everybody else, customers from KFC, Nando's, everybody will want to come and test this product. And we only got one chance, as I said to them, to hook them in. You don't have to have restaurant experience if you're thinking of joining us, but some working knowledge in food and beverage would definitely help. And also, an understanding that your customers are going to be looking for quick service. But whatever your experience, we're more than willing to help. And that level of trust and support comes from getting to know each other. Stage two now is when the shop opens. I'm here for two weeks to support the franchisee and the team to make sure by the time I leave here, they're confident and managing the shop by themselves. Brilliant. The key to our success is opening and developing markets where we can enter very quickly. We can enter into smaller cities where the large brands can't. They can't afford to enter those markets. Where we can go in at our scale of business with low investment and open rapidly. And we can go in and create brand awareness very fast. Our approach is we like to roll our sleeves up and get involved. What we found is we work best with people that put customer service at the heart of what they do. It's definitely worth doing. Uh, remember, you're working with the, with the international brand, so it was a nice experience for us as well um, to see how they do it and how they are successful in other countries. We start doing the menu costings with the franchisee. So they are sourcing raw products and that core ingredients. We then help them to now create the pricing of the menu. Having the freedom to source your own product, uh, to get the bridge product for the best price. Uh, we're up against massive competition um, and drive the margins and have the cost low. That's essential what the business is all about. So, um, yeah, it definitely will help us in the future going, going forward. Return on investment is typically around three years. However, we've had some amazing stories. Starting this business, we had absolutely no knowledge how to do it. We had no exper experienced person in our company who can do it. We plan to return money during three years, but we turned them in half a year. It was a big surprise for us, and also just this game was the impact to develop quicker. So we, we can open in very low population areas and still be profitable because our initial investment is low. We realised very early on the importance of access to reliable equipment. So we decided to bring research and development in-house. We manufacture our equipment on site. So we are continuously looking at new product development and innovation. And that's why we can guarantee reliability. The actual manufacturing side of the company started in 1964. Andrew's father was running the business next door. And in moving here, we acquired a new customer. We started making his equipment. We tried to come up with ideas that other people hadn't thought of, um, try and make the products more eco-friendly, reduce the amount of current required to use them, also develop things that will sustain food longer. Any franchisee or, or person using the equipment, if they've got any think that they don't like about it, we're, we're in the position where we can adapt and change things and we're able within a, a matter of weeks or days even 
to look into these problems and try and solve them. The first restaurant is the most difficult. It's all new. You're learning a whole new business. But once you've got that under your belt, the second and third and fourth are respectively very, very easy. The advantage, obviously, of scaling the brand is economies of scales, purchasing and profitability becomes better the more restaurants you operate. There is a difference between managing one shop and the net of shops because if you have a number of shops it's necessary to have standards and also uh, a number of rules on which the management will be based because if you have one just it's possible to be there and look for everything it's, that it, everything will be in order but if you have several shops there will be no possibility to be each time in the shop it's necessary to have rules on which the shop will be working for a guy like him to have over 40 shops you know um, going through through everything and, and, and experience everything and, and appointing people and managing his business that that's priceless you, you must uh, learn from someone like that um, uh, he's paid his school fees um, uh, going through that and um, we want definitely want to learn from him so what I'm saying is we guarantee you a level of support that isn't just paying lip service to that word but that we have a team of people here to help you with your marketing that might be point of sale that you need for your menu boards or for the tables in the restaurant it might be the development of a new product but it's not just that you may be going through some tough times seasonal activities such as religious festivals can impact on your business and the team are there to support you in the same way if you're looking to expand your business and you're looking to move from two three or maybe even ten franchises the team can help you with that development I still I'm a customer and I do try the chicken and it does remind me of those early days with my father we bought into that um, family type of, of business and also the taste of the chicken. I mean, that's essential what it is about, and the quality. Pressure frying keeps the moisture in the food and the oil out. And that's, that's the speciality about our, our food, that zesty lemon and herb and pepper taste. I want to be known for a quality, fresh chicken. I think it's very important, it's a core product. And if the core product is good and is handled properly, all the way through the processes that we've got, you end up with a good quality product. If you're interested in joining us, here's some of the questions you might want to ask yourself. How will you fund this? Where are you planning to open? What locations? How can I grow? Where can I grow? How many can I open? The logistics, what's available locally? Do you have the manpower skills, the man management to make this happen? We can help put this together for you in a professional business plan, and we can work on this plan together. I think the most rewarding thing for me is that I've seen that the way we operate as a company means that our business relationships turn into friendships. You know, it's not just business for me, it's so personal. So that's key to the way I want to grow the business, that's at a very personal level. And that's why I only work with certain people. Here we are, we've opened our first uh, store uh, in South Africa, in Cape Town and hopefully the first of many to come.